This is Dunk's car. Now you might be thinking, well hang on a minute Al, haven't you already got a video on that? Well we have, however, we've recently decided to trade it in for something a bit different. In order to find out what that is, you'll have to tune in same time next week. Anyway, back to this. So this is a 2013 Mitsubishi Outlander. And well in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full tour slash review of it. So, starting off here at the front, and well, straight away we get an idea of this thing's capability. I mean, just look at it. It looks so incredibly purposeful and aggressive, it's unbelievable. The huge, great big grill, iconic of Mitsubishi's from this time. Love it, love everything about the design of this thing. Got a really nice grey metallic paint as well, which in this lovely autumnal sun, it's well nice, nice and shiny and everything. Headlamps, love the design of them. As you can see, you've got built-in washers for them as well. Very nice indeed. Furthermore, when you turn the wheel, the steering wheel that is, when you go around the bend, you've got additional little side lights which will illuminate to help you see as you're going around the bend. Underneath the bonnet then, we have a 2.4 litre turbocharged diesel, which can drive all four wheels via a six-speed manual gearbox. Quick side note, said gearbox actually feels really clunky and mechanical, and just generally is not nice to shift, particularly into reverse. This is one of the reasons why we are going to be getting rid of the car. Another being the fuel consumption, which is okay for this class of vehicle, but is not up to sort of standard we would be looking for. Looking down the side profile now, and once again, we continue to see that theme of purpose with this thing. I mean, just look at it. There is no denying the utilitarian side of this thing. Great big roof bars, huge alloy wheels, which, despite a little bit of corrosion, still look absolutely gorgeous. I personally would say that they are a size or too big. I don't know exactly how big they are, but I do think that they are a size or too big for this car because when you're driving along, you can hear quite a bit of road noise, but um, overall they are still, you know, it, it's not a deafening noise, but it is a noticeable noise. You've also got electric door mirrors as well, nice big chunky fellas, huge fan of them. This particular vehicle here, this is the GX4 specification. I don't know what that means, nobody knows what it means really, but hey ho. Um, <laughs> yeah. One thing I would like to point out though, that is that this thing isn't just a 4x4, oh no, it's an SUV, which means there's a bit of sportiness about it, and that can be seen in rather subtle details, including this rear spoiler here. Just adds that little bit extra, doesn't it? Moving round to the rear then, um, <laughs> hang on, let me just let myself out. As you can see, the rear bumper folds down, providing ease of access you know huge great big opening here which is really handy for sliding objects in and out or in this case people um <laughs> anyway as you can see huge boot as well it's not just the opening the actual space inside of there it's just brilliant um pickford fosgate speaker in here absolutely huge thing great audio system that you got with this with the upgraded pickford fosgate system as i've just mentioned You've got other features as well, including a 12 volt socket and cheeky little levers, which put, fold down the rear seats. Or are they the rear seats? Because they're not actually the rearmost seats, because this thing is a seven seater. Yes, that's right, underneath this fancy cover here, we've got an additional couple seats. So this thing isn't just practical for carrying luggage, but it's also practical for carrying people too. Anyway, let's have a look at the actual styling of the tailgate here. So the lights, love them, huge fan of the lights here. Also absolutely adore the privacy glass that you get on this thing. Um, as you can see, fancy little intelligent motion badge. Nice, don't know what it means, but nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> reflectors built in as well, and rear parking sensors as well. Um, there's a tow bar under there, believe it or not which again adds to the utilitarianism of this vehicle. 
but then the twin exhaust adds to the sportiness of this thing. So really, it is just a great all-rounder as a vehicle. But what's it like on the inside? Let's find out now. <sighs> right, here in the rear of this thing then, honestly, it's a really nice place to be. You know, you've got these leather seats which are so so comfortable even the center one isn't too too firm so you will be able to carry three people in the back comfortably though you won't want to do too long of a journey all right because there is quite a large hump in the floor here and so you know people will be fighting for foot space a bit um here in the center as well also got central armrest no storage to speak of and there's also no through lo loading as well in actual fact you've only got bi folding seats so that's a bit of a bummer however what it lacks in that department it makes up for in the fact that the cup holders aren't in the center where you're gonna put your elbow in them and aren't just permanently exposed so you can put your wrist in them either oh no you can have them folded down and just use it as an armrest or you can pop them up and shove a standard bottle in them which of course fits perfectly however that's not the only thing that fits oh no much bloody hell a much bigger flask which i seem to have lost the lid for that fits in all right in fact actually there's still a little bit of room so you could get bigger still not by much but you could get even bigger than this in there equally if we're gonna downsize get tiny tim he goes in beautifully as well, and he's not going to rattle around too much either, which is great. Um, door bins as well, they're also very practical. So Tiny Tim goes in a treat. He might rattle around a bit in the door bin, but normal size bottles or even flasks. I've got to stop dropping this thing. <laughs> or even flasks. Perfectly fine. No complaints there. Also, there's further practicality in the sense that you've got pockets on the back of both seats really nice so you can put maps and all the rest of it in there as for headspace back here well this thing does come with a sunroof which does in eat into the amount of available space however because you can recline these seats no problems at all and you know if if the um load cover or parcel shelf wasn't there then you could put them down really far you know so yeah that makes up for it and headspace you know i'm about six foot ish give or take i'm completely fine so people over six foot will cope in the back here nicely knee room isn't bad at all either i mean you know this seat is in dunk's normal driving position now i appreciate that he isn't the tallest of fellas but even so this sorry beyond the camera but even so you know i've got plenty of room here you know Plenty of room for him, plenty of room for me, plenty of room all round. You can stretch your feet out right the way underneath the front passenger seat because there's literally nothing under there. It, it, it's mounted as such. However, because the driver's seat is electrically adjustable, you've got the power pack and all the electrical gubbins under there. And so you can get a decent way, but you can't go right the way through. Just a little thing to note. Um, other things to note include the squidgy materials up here, nice and soft. Yeah, I've got a little bit of scratchy plastics, but, you know, they're nothing major. Um, my phone's falling out of my pocket. Um, <laughs> further squidgy materials here, and, uh, yeah, and another Pickford Fosgate speaker from that lovely audio system. And who the hell is pulling in just next to us? Brilliant. They've got the whole flipping car park. Yeah. Anyway, we've just about finished in the back here, just as well. So, uh, yeah, let's hop in the front. Voila, so this is me sat at the business end, something which I've never done before and something which I'll never do again. But what I can say is you've got a nice view out the front. Front corners are perhaps a teeny bit difficult to see, but I've, I've seen worse, to be honest. <coughs> Range Rover Evoque. Um, door mirrors are nice and big, nicely placed, perfect to see out of. You have got very large rear pillars, though, which do create quite a bit of a blind spot. But if you can negotiate around them, you'll be absolutely fine. And you have got a reversing camera as well as rear parking sensors. So, you know, manoeuvring this thing, even in the tightest of spots, shouldn't be too, too difficult. Um, other things to talk about, electric windows. Um, 
this one for the driver here this is an automatic one all the others you have to press and hold the button i don't know why they did that on some of them i mean dunk's previous car volvo xc70 that was a 2008 vehicle fully automatic electric windows all the way through don't know but you know still you've got electric windows all the way through which can't be said for some other similar cars these front two seats here they're both heated not cooled but realistically that's not too much of an issue you slide this fella back push this button you can open the sunroof switch lets through a nice amount of air flow um driver's display it's a semi-digital setup and it gives you just about any and all information that you may well want or need you have got cruise control with this thing all right as well as bluetooth connectivity for your phone so you know all the mod cons really also got a nice nice little cup holder just here four wheel drive system down here so you can put, have it in front wheel drive all wheel drive or lockable all wheel drive which restricts you to about 40 miles an hour or else you're going to end up damaging the damn thing but that's for proper off-roading something which we have never done yet no we'll never do that um <laughs> anyway moving on uh, swiftly got a teeny tiny cup holder just in here perfect for tiny tim but any larger bottles may well find actually no some larger bottles may well find themselves flying out of there this ain't too bad let's just try the yeah the flask doesn't fit brilliantly i can't lie and that's also going to be very awkward to get out because you've got all the climate controls here which i'm a huge fan of because they are proper pucker physical dials and buttons instead of touch sensitive malarkey that you know you get through a infotainment system all lumped in one don't like that in these modern cars don't know, don't know why they do that much prefer the proper physical job is one other thing which i absolutely love about this infotainment system all right is the fact that in order to access the cd player along with a couple other card slots etc all right press this little open button what it'll do is it'll pop out swivel round and retract out the way that is absolutely incredible the only other car which i've ever seen that on is an aston martin <laughs> this is this is a 2013 mitsubishi outlander it's got that wicked 12 volt socket down here there we go oh and one other thing see you just keep finding more don't you compartment up here in the dash which is cool so if the air conditioning worked on this thing which it doesn't because it's not been regassed but if it did then you could actually pump air conditioning into here and cool this whole compartment down so you could put milk in there and keep it there for a few hours if that's what you wanted to do as well as then you've also got a normal box sounded glove box which isn't dampened as you just saw and nor does it electrically retract or lower but yeah no that is everything now thank you all very much for watching and i shall catch you next week bye for now <laughs>